experts are now convinced that this skeleton is the first forensic evidence of Cleopatra's family ever found. The shape of the tomb, its similarity to the pharos, these are all parts of a code, and the whole of it comes together to make a complete picture. At last, we can solve the mystery, beyond doubt, of who this skeleton actually is. None other than Cleopatra's sister, Arsinoe, Egyptian rebel, queen of Egypt, murdered on the sacred ground of the holy temple of Artemis by Mark Antony on the orders of his lover. But of course, what we haven't known until now is what she looked like. But of course, what we haven't known until now is what she looked like. But of course, what we haven't known until now is what she looked like. Although the forensic team have only an incomplete skeleton, using our virtual template, we can now rebuild the skull. Pilka and Fabian thought the skull was lost forever, so I'm dying to see how they'll react. <laughs> and we've been looking for the skull for a long time. Wow. And we don't have the real thing, but we've got the next best oh. thing, which is a very exact oh. replica. Oh. Cool. Super, oh. super. And this oh. is where it should be. May we touch it? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> it's, 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 it's of course. course. No, it's ah. <laughs> cool. This is really cool, yeah. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's really like looking in her face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this is quite another thing to have the skull of of, of her the in skull. your in your hands. Yes. This is this is a really uh, enormous big feeling. <laughs> mm. Wow. <laughs> well, it was worth bringing that. Driving her home. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow. The forensic team are convinced they've proved beyond doubt that these are the bones of Princess Arsinoe. But rebuilding the skull has unlocked an incredible secret about her ancestry. Now, the problem for me, it's not about color. It's not about white and black. This is a very reductive way to talk about things. This is the way that Americans talk about it. I'm very sorry. Like, I come from Egypt. Egypt has a very diverse color palette. People can look like me or they can look deeper skin tone like Anwar Sadat who comes from a Nubian origin. It's not about black and white. It's about the continuous culture falsi uh, appropriation and falsification of history that has been done by what the so-called Afrocentrist movement. The Afrocentric movement started the last century as a way in a good intention to teach African American about their rich history of West Africa, the great empire of Benin, of Ghana, um, of uh, Songali, uh, the great empire of Mali. But the thing is, that's why you find people like Kevin Hart, who subscribes to these theories, who claim that his ancestors play, uh, build the pyramids. I'm sorry, your ancestors had their own wonderful civilization in West Africa. They are culture appropriating my culture. They are culture appropriating my culture. They are culture appropriating my culture. This is not a work of fiction. This is a documentary. This is a documentary. There's a huge difference. This is not The Little Mermaid, which is like a fictional character where you can, anybody can play anything. The, uh, uh, Cleopatra came from a Macedonian Greek origin. The, uh, uh, Cleopatra came from a Macedonian Greek origin. The, uh, uh, Cleopatra came from a Macedonian Greek origin. Until recently, Cleopatra's dynasty was thought to be Greek, European, Caucasian, but some scholars now believe Cleopatra and her siblings had African blood. Could the answer be in this skull? The distance from the forehead to the back of the skull is long in relation to the overall height of the cranium. And that's something that you see quite frequently in certain populations, one of which is ancient Egyptians. Another would be um, black African groups will also show that characteristic. Um, this one certainly looks more white European, but it has got this long head shape. It could suggest a, a mixture of ancestry. Our revelation backs up the controversial theory that the princess, and therefore her sister Cleopatra, also had African blood. Our revelation backs up the controversial theory that the princess, and therefore her sister Cleopatra, also had African blood. Our revelation backs up the controversial theory that the princess 
and therefore her sister Cleopatra also had African blood. But the CT scan has one more surprise for Alejandro. Shamai's ethnicity. Well, they have just told me that uh, Shamai has a Nubian feature, which means that um, their ruling family was probably Nubian, and th that was unexpected. Examining Shamai's anatomy closely, the thickness of his bone and the shape of his nasal cavity, the anthropologists think he was a black African, likely from neighboring Nubia. A huge revelation that challenges the prevailing image of the Egyptian ruling class. We always thought the ancient Egyptian elites were Mediterranean type. We always thought the ancient Egyptian elites were Mediterranean type. We always thought the ancient Egyptian elites were Mediterranean type. We always thought the ancient Egyptian elites were Mediterranean type. And in this sense, Shema is representing the society of, uh, of the frontier in which different ethnic uh, groups were mixed. At the end, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Shema was Egyptian. At the end, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Shema was Egyptian. At the end, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Shemai was Egyptian. I hope you guys really listened with intelligence and made a note of what was said. You've heard with your own ears how comedian Basim Yosef, in a nice nasty way, called us culture vultures by stating, quote, they are culture appropriating my culture. And yet he says, it's not about color. It's not about black and white. But out of the same breath says that Cleopatra came from a Macedonian group. Greek origin, which is a nice, nasty way of stating she was white. The anthropologists are saying something totally different, as you've heard with your own ears in the initial set of clips. Cleopatra and her sister, according to the anthropologists in this video, had African blood, which means both Cleopatra and her sister, Arsinoe, would be called mulatto, which in this case, they will be called Negroes, according to the one drop rule and they would take on the status of their negro mother according to the negro law of south carolina the status of the negro his rights and disabilities section one the act of 1740 section one declares all negroes and indians free Indians in amity with this government, Negroes, mulattoes, mustizos, who now are free, accepted to be slaves. The offspring to follow the condition of the mother and that such slaves are chattels personal. Section two, under this provision, it has been uniformly held that color is prima facie evidence that the party bearing the color of a Negro, mulatto, or mustizo is a slave, but the same prima facie results does not follow from the Indian color. This means anyone mixed with a Negro would still be called a Negro. The anthropologist in the fourth clip confirmed that the Egyptian Shemay was a black African. The scientist leading the project was in complete shock as the news was revealed. He expressed that he was expecting the results to come back that Shemay was of Tehranian origin, which is a group that consists of Bulgarians, Estonians, Mongols, Finns, and Turks. This is why Basim Yosef and others like him make deceptive statements that the Egyptians come in all shades. In the end, this scientist who was shocked at the findings says, quote, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Shemay was Egyptian. At the end, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Shemay was Egyptian. At the end, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Shemay was Egyptian. At the end, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Shemay was Egyptian. What's your thoughts? Please be respectful with your comments. Also, please click the like, click the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel.
listen. Genesis chapter 11, verse 10. Explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13. Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the Jacob had 12 sons, for real. And these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. Genesis chapter 10. These were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.